Hello, uh, my name is Brian Leonard, and some of you have seen me before. I've been here uh, some time at CTN doing various shows. Um, but I'm here tonight with some friends of mine that uh, were a part of the Meg Perry Center in some shape or form. Actually, there's one here that hasn't been yet. but um, uh, So we're here tonight to talk about the Meg Perry Center and uh, some of our experiences there and perhaps uh, getting a new community center. Maybe it'll be called the Meg Perry Center. Maybe it'll be called something new. But uh, we're going to uh, talk about that tonight. And uh, so for right now, let me just send it around and have people uh, introduce themselves and uh, tell us a little bit about why they found themselves on the couch or chair that, that they're on. Start with you. <laughs> check, out the, check out the camera people. OK. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kara, or Kara Oster. Um, I have, I found myself in the Meg Perry Center the first day that I had moved to Portland. Um, it was really the first place that I heard about to go and to meet people because I didn't know anybody. And from there, I became an organizer um, through Occupy Maine and um, later on became one of the board of directors on, on the MPC board. Um, so I've definitely been pretty involved with the center. Um, I'm very passionate about the community that it built and the people that it brought together, the events that it allowed to happen, um, and the meetings as well. They were all vital parts of our community um, and made organizing in the community much more accessible. Um, you don't really find places like that, any places like that um, right. around here. Right. Very good. So uh, why don't we go, we'll make it easier for the camera people now, we'll go over to Will and then shoot it right on down the line. Well, my name is William Hessian. Uh, I got involved um, with the Meg Perry Center kind of the first uh, day I walked uh, into Portland. It was one of the first stops I made. Um, and I, I'm an artist and an activist and, uh, and a social worker. Um, and I was very involved with Occupy, which had a lot of ties into the Meg Perry Center um, at the time when I was kind of, when I arrived. And also the Meg Perry Center um, and being involved with the art there allowed for uh, me and Abbas to start the Hidden Ladder Collective, um, which uh, really was born out of, out of the Meg Perry Center for us and has been something I was passionate about. And I'm Heidi Deertaller. I'm a social and environmental justice advocate. And I actually got to sing at the benefit for Meg Perry's send off to send her back to, uh, to New Orleans for her final trip. It was a real honor to be there also with Vanessa Torres and a whole host in the band called The Weather Beaten. Um, so I wasn't the only one. I was just little voice in the in the midst. But um, it's now that that send off happened at the Mayo Street Arts, and um, I just I was part. I became part of Occupy Maine after that, and found that Occupy Maine then took over started at the same, staying at the same place as, as the Meg Perry Center. And it was just a natural uh, evolution for Occupy Maine to have to share that space. And, and I think that we did a lot of really good, important work from various different workshops and various different art openings and open mic nights. and and a whole host of really important things that we did through the years. So I'm very honored to be here tonight. I'm Abbott Russell, and um, I was involved at the Meg Perry Center through doing art shows. And um, as Will said, we really developed the Hidden Ladder Collective out of that. And it was just really, really great to have a space to just really experiment and be able to try out all sorts of like strange, exciting ideas as far as the art shows. And also, um, we developed an open mic out of there called Turnstile Thursday. And it was just a really great kind of breeding ground for so many ideas that are still really alive and well. So, yeah. And I'm Jackie Devenel. 
And um, when the center first opened, um, one of the two organizations that opened it was Peace Action Maine. And in uh, 2010, I was hired on to be their office manager, which I did for two years. And because I was there Monday through Friday, I kind of was the person that oversaw quite a few, quite a while, the whole center. Um, we were, it was a place where people came, <clears throat> different organizations, sort of like an incubator, different organizations uh, like the Portland uh, Food Co-op that was there that went on. Um, and then of course Occupy came and was there for a good part of the, during the winter and it was a wonderful <coughs> place to be because it was a connecting of so many of the different organizations in the area. Uh, they would come and hold their meetings there. Um, and as, as Will said, you know, it's where people would just come that were first in the area that didn't know much about the area and they would just wander in and right. we could talk to them. And it was mostly it was community and that's really, really important. My name is Ginny Schneider, and although I'm fairly new to Portland, a number of years ago I was walking down Congress Street before I moved here and happened upon Peace Action in a storefront on Congress Street, and I was completely impressed by that. And so when I moved here last year, I immediately went up to Congress Street to find Peace Action and it wasn't there anymore. And I felt that that part of the community was gone, essentially, that there was no storefront. And since then, I have become the coordinator of the Maine War Tax Resistance Resource Center. And as the coordinator, I would love to have an office where I interact with other organizations. So I've gotten involved in uh, meeting with the Meg Perry Center folks to try to facilitate a, a new center, if at all possible, because I think an incubation center for small nonprofits and groups that are working on critical issues in our society is definitely needed and a place for people in Portland okay. uh, needs to be available. Right. Jenny, tell me a little more about uh, war active, uh, I mean, uh, war tax resistance, because I, I was talking with someone earlier today and they'd never heard of it. Yes, um, there are several ways to do it. You can either illegally resist war taxes or legally do it. Um, if you illegally do it, you work whatever job you may have, and if your income is above uh, or is taxable in the eyes of the IRS, you can either send your forms in and not send a check, or, or you could um, not send the forms in. There are various penalties associated with that kind of uh, tax resistance. The legal way is to basically look at your lifestyle and say, okay, how am I going to live below taxable realistically? And I think in an urban area like Portland, that can be pretty difficult given the housing costs. And um, I certainly know that war tax resistors in New York City and, and other urban areas do have difficulty bringing their incomes down just in terms of uh, being able to pay the housing costs. But others do practice it that way and they, they view it as war tax resistance because they're not contributing to the machine. Even though it's legal, um, they are changing their lifestyle essentially to right. be less consumer oriented. Um, the main war tax resistance resource center has 
lots of materials available on all aspects of war tax resistance. And there is a national website, uh, nwtrcc.org, which is National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee. And soon we will have a main page on that. Um, if you would like to know more about it, uh, we will uh, be providing information about April actions. I'm really proud to say if you go on the Nutric website, it has all the actions around the country, and Maine has a long list. There are 11 actions going on in April, and uh, one already uh, has happened in terms of tabling. Uh, up at University of Maine and Augusta, but nice. um, there are 11 more coming up in April, and we'll have that whole schedule available, perhaps even associated with the show. Right, right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I wonder, um, oh, uh, and I wonder, um, you might be able to talk with Bruce Gagnon on his show, this issue, right, if you haven't already? Yeah. Do you know? Well, it's okay. We'll we'll get to that. But there's another. There's a, a friend of friend of ours uh, that uh, does a show, and uh, um, I'm sure he would love to talk to you about about the same same issue. So, uh, and uh, Heidi, you had, you had something to yeah. to chime in. Why can't we just tell the government where we want our tax dollars to go if we send our ch check? Why can't we say we want our tax dollars earmarked for Department of Peace. Okay, mm. so you can do so that. We don't have the Department of Peace yet, but we'd like to have one. <laughs> you can do that. You have to make sure, unless you want to risk a $5,000 fine, you cannot write that <coughs> on the tax form, but you can enclose that in a letter. Uh, they obviously will ignore it, but you, you could do it as a protest. Um, some people have been charged the $5,000 fine, even though it's just a letter, and that is actually illegal. And, and uh, at the national level, we have worked with congressional members, actually, to have the IRS back off on that, because it was totally against the IRS regulations. Um, so that is a possible way. There is a... Um, annual bill that is filed called the Peace Tax Fund, which is essentially to establish through uh, the bill a way to be a conscientious objector to war taxes. And um, both AFSC, American Front Service Committee, and the War Resisters League document how, how much of our taxes go to military causes and war and it's depending on the way you calculate it it's 45 to 55 percent of the taxes people pay go to fuel the war machine rather than social spending um, so annually this bill is filed but it has never received a hearing and there is an organization that works on that bill out of Washington very nice. Okay, so let's. Um, I want to take a, a, a break, but I, I also want to point out that our backdrop here, the artwork that you see, is uh, uh, Sky Priestley's. And uh, we're going to uh, we'll do a short uh, break and show some of his art uh, during that break. And when we uh, come back, uh, we will talk a, a little more uh, with, with everybody and maybe. Um, reminisce on the Meg Perry Center a bit or well we'll see we'll see what the what the group wants to do when we uh, come back but we'll be back in a few moments
Welcome back. Uh, we were having fun off set. We did a little scramble around. We um, uh, lost one of our uh, guests tonight, but uh, she had to leave early, and uh, we're back, though. We are going to talk a little bit more about the Meg Perry Center, and I, I wanted to ask, um, you know, just in general question, and I don't know who gets to go first, but what's your favorite memories of the Meg Perry Center? What was, what was like, the most... Like Maybe I can the most first. inspiring yeah. moments that you remember. Um, um, okay. I, well. I, mean, I remember specifically like um, a time period or, or a day. I mean, basically like we had a 10, 10 minute showcase art show, um, which wasn't just an art show. Um, Heidi performed at that. Abbott performed at that. Um, and I, I mean, I don't forget how many acts we had. We had like 34 from around around all of Portland. It was this great um, kind of like energy of bringing everybody in together, do a 10 minute performance. We had two stages, so you'd go back and forth. It was, it, people were sitting on the floor and on chairs. Um, that kind of thing was, was really fun for me. And also I remember right going in and setting that up, you're amongst, um, there was some kind of a meeting for, a, you know, I think it was even a co-op meeting or something. Um, but th that was pretty common, right? You come in, there's some activist, uh, important work being done for some organization, right. and maybe, and you might, I might even get invited to sit down and work at that, um, and, and help with that, or they might have some questions about the Meg Perry Center. You're doing that, and then you're going into this, like, great show at night, and everybody's interacting and connecting, and you got people walking in to see the show that may have been involved in different events from before, a political event or that kind of thing. Um, I just remember spending hours um, setting up those shows with Abbott a lot of the times and just being during that time period there's different people walking in you're just interacting with so many things and that wasn't like a one-off situation that was just a great example that 10 minute showcase where we're there all day setting up and the stuff that's happening in that space is inspiring and and really energetic and you're really feeding off the energy and then when you come in that next day after it's all done there's other stuff going on something right. else to get involved in yeah, it's nonstop. Right. it's just nonstop. Right. that's right um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go next, so I'm just real quickly. Um, Will and I, uh, but Will mostly did a video to promote the Meg Perry Center in the summer, end of the summer. Um, and we thought that the place, we thought we were going to lose the place, or people thought we were going to lose the place because it was pretty dead in the water, like financially, and it had gotten really quiet around there and Hidden Ladder kind of started up. There was music and art suddenly, and the place was bubbling. And it went from really quiet to um, just like crazy. Like people like you're, like you're saying, well, like, you know, there's like an event one day and it just bled into the next. And so like a whole month went by and it was like just uh, uh, rapid fire uh, events going on and we had we made more money in that month than we'd made in like six months or something and we sort of the like the all everyone had gotten together it was like one of those uh, teen um, uh, what do you call those, those teen movies where they're about to lose the community <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> exactly that like you know and they do a they do a um, uh, oh, what do you call it film I should know this right uh, so you do a little fast forward of everyone painting the walls and getting the place put back together. And we're going to save the we're going to save the center, and it was kind of like that, and it was fun. Even with we, the painting the walls. Yeah, I think we even painted the walls. We did. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, yeah, it was a very exciting time for me. But the outcome of that that video that Will mostly did all the work on was wonderful. Uh, that that Meg Perry promo, I loved that. It gave me uh, gave me chills to see all of that, all of those people comment on, on what it meant to them. And uh, it's kind of what we're doing here now. Who's going like to go next? I'd like to go next. Yes. OK, um, I have a rather poignant thing to share. Um, but it has to start with the fact, for people that don't know how Meg Perry Center got its name, yes. is that there was a wonderful young activist named Meg Perry. and. Um, she was one of the people that went down uh, during Katrina. They took the um, Freedom Bus mm -hmm. down uh, to help 
out down there and there was a horrible accident and she was killed instantly. And so this is where we got the name for Meg Perry. And I was working in the Peace Action office one day and there wasn't anybody else around and this woman came into the downstairs and I asked if I could help her and she looked up to me with tears in her eyes and she said, I'm Meg's mother. Aww. And I went down and we had a long conversation and she she wrote us a check for the center to have to get when we were, we were getting things moving forward to buy furniture and whatever with. And so for That's me wonderful. that was that was just a very poignant yeah. a poignant thing to have happen. Right. But my my fondest memories were during Occupy, um, we used to have these amazing meetings and people would come from all over and they would be basically hanging from the rafters. <laughs> that's yeah. true, yeah, that's it true. true. And we Every had, walk we of life. we had some right. amazing facilitators that were within that group. And yep. it was, it was that energy of Occupy, but also that continued energy of activism yeah. that and we are so blessed in this state yeah. to have the activist community that we have here in this state. Right. So that's that's what I hold from the center personally. So very nice. Very nice. Kara? Yeah, I actually yeah. I do have um, some memories that come to mind. One one of my favorite times is when Kara came in. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, that was really. This person is gonna be all right. This, yeah, that was the first day I came in. I mean, obviously down the line, I really loved when the youth got involved, and we had a lot of incredible people. We had like Greg McKillop and Street City Surf, and a lot of those, a lot of <clears throat> high schoolers. Um, but the brightest memory that comes to mind is <laughs> probably May Day. Um, which when I came to Portland and stepped into the center, I had found out that kind of Occupy Maine was, had just been evicted from Lincoln Park. Um, spirits were low. It was winter, it was cold. Um, so I came in and I don't know why, I was just like, what are we doing for May Day? And it's no, nobody said anything, they were like, nothing. So I spent probably the next Two or three months, I think I, I, it was two months, I spent almost every day I would spend at least four to five hours at the Mike Perry Center, if not more, um, calling all across the state. I tried to find all of these different numbers. I, for the first time, worked with the labor unions, um, the AFL-CIO, um, Southern Maine workers union. I went to those meetings. Um, I had never been involved with the unions before. Um, talking to a lot of people, talking to workers in general. Um, we did some videoing, I think, and we ended up having this really big rally in the pouring rain on like a 40 degree day in Congress Square Park. And we had a good amount of people, like I'd say circling through 50 to 100 different yeah. people people from like Massachusetts, people from different places across the state. Um, and we had, we had a soapbox and we, we rallied <laughs> and it was pretty amazing. Um, afterwards we came to the Meg Perry Center because it was pouring rain and it was freezing cold. And we all got to share our stories and meet one another. And I met so many <coughs> activists, so many people that are still in like my network today. I met, drenched yeah. in the Meg Perry <laughs> Center <laughs> after this yeah. grand event and just the amount of people that stepped up to help me um, at the center was amazing. Jackie helped me a lot and um, yeah, so I guess just that event stands out in my mind all those hours. <laughs> nice. So. nice. Very nice. I don't, I'm afraid we're running out of time, but I'm not sure where we're at. Um, so we'll, we'll keep we'll keep trying. Like let's let's talk about. Uh, I know that you. Uh, I'm th I'm thinking of the 24 hour uh, art. The oh, the, art. the 12 hour painting marathon. Yeah. Or yeah. 12, I 12 mean. Hour, yeah. Sorry, yeah. 
24 hours is going to happen eventually. But you're right, right. Yeah, I mean. 12 hours. 12 is enough. Yeah, I'm just, like, flooded with so many amazing memories of the Meg Perry Center. It's really, for me, it's, like, every first Friday because it was, like, what we'd work towards all month, like, getting ready for the art shows um, was just, like, you know, came to fruition first Fridays and just seeing the place, like, completely fill up with just so many people and it would always spill out into the sidewalks and there was music and art and just, like, so much just buzz and excitement happening. Um, and, yeah, the 12-hour painting marathon, we'd... We called it the Hidden Ladder Lock-In, and we locked ourselves into the Meg Perry Center for 12 hours, which is like, you know, it was just such a great place to be that being in there for 12 hours was just really fun. And um, we just painted and made a painting every hour for 12 hours, and anyone was welcome to come in and join us. And we actually, we still do those. Now we do them out on the street because we don't have a space anymore. Um, right. But it was, it, was really, right. it was really great doing it in there. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with Will, too. It's like the every day leading up to those art shows was just so much fun. Like I remember specifically one day hanging, we were hanging hundreds of markers down from the ceiling on strings for people to come in and color and uh, stuff that was drawn on the walls or uh, pictures that were up on the walls. So it was, everything we did there was really like interactive. Um, but I just remember hanging the markers down from the ceiling and having a whole bunch of people like all working together and just thinking like this is the most fun thing ever. It's like the silliest task to be doing, but it was just really, really fun. And, Nice. So many good memories. Nice. I th I'm sorry. I think we're going to be, that's all we got. <laughs> I, sorry. Yeah, very quick. Very yeah, quick. I just want to say that I really think that Meg probably would, I was blessed to meet her at the send-off, and I just can't help but think that she would be so proud of all the organizations and all the different people coming together. Yeah in her memory, in her honor, in terms of being in service to other people. And I think that would make her heart proud. That's a perfect place, perfect place to stop. And I uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. We're going um, to be doing a show on the last Friday of every month um, from here on out. And we hope uh, that you'll join us. Um, and I hope that I'm not going to be the host. <laughs> but this is our first show, and uh, that's why it's a little bit, uh, you know, we're a little loose on, the, on, the, on everything here. But uh, we're um, uh, really glad you're able to see this, and, uh, and we will check you out uh, a month from now. Thank you so much. <laughs>